Well, hello everyone and welcome back to this Let's Play Star Citizen. There's a plan for today. There was an unexpected event for me which allowed me to get my hands, at least for now, I'm probably going to trade it back in because to me it's not worth the price. The Super Hornet, which uh, is probably the most powerful fighter in the game at the moment, the Super Hornet. There is a couple planned that are going to be more powerful, but yeah, it comes standard. We've tried the Hornet, but we've never tried the Super Hornet. The main difference is the Super Hornet has a close to military loadout. It's, it's standard. Like the components is nearly military grade all the way through, at least from what I've read about it. And it comes off with this ball turret at the top, standard. I have taken the stock guns off like there is a turret at the front here as well that normally has two size ones i've taken that off replaced it with a one size three ungimbaled took the size two gimbals off and put size threes so it does have a mixed loadout so i really don't like mixed loadouts i really need to i think there is a turret you can buy in game that can change this so that it's no longer gimbal that's fixed i don't know but i don't i'm not really keen on the mix of gimbals and Thingy, but I really like to use uh, fixed weapons now. The uh, the because for the extra DPS on fight small things like fighters, any anything bigger like a Connie or anything, I think gimbal is still the way to go. But for smaller stuff, yeah. But yeah, let's give this uh, let's give this bad boy a run for its money. Let's uh, jump right into it. If we go into the mission manager, Maybe that's not it. The contacts manager, that's what I'm looking for. Let's go into bounty hunter. A C4, yeah, let's accept a C4. And let's accept the C3 as well. Let's uh, go into the mercenary call to arms, make sure we've got that accepted. It's kind of annoying you have to accept that every time. I often forget. Let's go to the skyline. They're almost always at yellow now, I've noticed. They used to sometimes be at Daymar. But they're almost always at yellow now. I don't know which one's the difficulty four and which one's the three, but I guess we'll find out. Very fast and nimble ship as well as for a medium fighter. Maybe I'm just used to flying stuff that's heavier again. But it feels nimble flying this thing around. Thank you. The priest is here. Oh 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 careful me. Saying it's nimble. Start riding into Port Oh, sorry, I should stop just throwing myself around. Let's see, did that do much damage? Ah, I didn't really take much damage. Yeah, this thing seems tanky as hell. Right. Let's get over there and do these missions. Uh, personally, my funds in the game uh, for the foreseeable future is going to be becoming a Mercury Star Runner, that's for sure. I really like the look of the ship. I really like the overall f feel, its ability. I love, it seems like the perfect ship for me just doing some really sort of simple, easy content like uh, cargo missions and uh, delivery missions with my wee ones my wee ones now have an account and i'm really looking forward to what is it i'm waiting on shadow to come because we don't have enough powerful pcs for me the wife and the wee ones to play all at the same time i've only got one account for the wee ones but i'm really looking forward for shadow so that we can get them in at the same time and doing stuff like that there we go. 
And yeah, the Mercury Star Runner seems like a great ship. We're just us all mucking about on together. Um, I have taken some to heart that I have heard from a group of people called the Info Runners. You can find them on YouTube. I've been enjoying a lot of their content on Star Citizen recently. They do a lot of sort of podcasts where they just sit and ramble and talk about the game. And one of the things they said to me makes a lot of sense. Because one of the things we've always known is bang for buck, money-wise, if you've got money in the game, you're going to want it to be on things they say above $200 in the price range. Because you're getting the most bang for your buck. Basically, the cheaper the ship is... Oh, Sun's got a turret radar lock on me. Wait, I'm gonna, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I've got the wrong mission trapped. What am I doing? Okay, I'll get back to what I was saying. Eh. Job manager. What the? F Wait, where's contact manager? This is not the contact manager. There we go. Accepted. <laughs> Swap them over to the other one, track this one because it'll be closer. There we go. Right direction now. Right. So, for ex the cheaper a ship is, the less money efficient it's going to be, kind of thing. Like, uh, so if a ship's worth $50 to buy in real life, once uh, everything's all finalised in the economy, it'll be worth, say, a million credits. But if it's worth a hundred, it may be worth three million credits. It's 150, five million credits. See, it's like a curve, exponential growth. Like the more money it costs in real life, the faster it earns value in game. So they don't recommend. It's going to be so easy to earn those cheap ships in games. What they're saying. So my recommendation really is, if you're going to spend money on this game, is just get yourself a starter ship. But if you're going to spend more than just a starter ship... Oh, whoa, I've got missile locks on me. Lots of them. Ooh, what's attacking me? Oh, EMP too. I think this is a, might be a player. Yeah, I'm thinking this is a player. Oh, I know my shields are down. Yeah, I think that was that was a player. We just got attacked and ambushed by a player. I was really not expecting to come under attack there. I was in a world of my own. All of a sudden, like, you're under, like, one of the blue things turned red and we got, like, several missiles incoming. I was like, what? And we got EMP'd. Yep. <sighs> Ambush and killed by a player. It's been a long time since that's happened. Uh, yeah, nice. Right, so. Yeah, I finished my stuff. I was wanting to talk about there, though. The, the info runners seem like a great bunch of guys. That's kind of frustrating because I wanted to show the ship off. Oh well. Just reading the stuff there, I thought there may have been sun. So yeah, we'll expedite this. Okay, expedited fee. <sighs> Is there anything else? Sure, there was something else I wanted to see. So yeah, the Mercury Star. Yeah, I'll talk about the Mercury Star Runner. Like my thoughts there. Like it's Mercury Star Runner is above two hundred. Has that data carrying capacity? There's lots of stuff there that has me 
interested in it will be a lot better at making money than say a super hornet which uh, is just a fighter and a uh, super hornet is getting close to that 200 dollar mark but again it is just a fighter fighters mm, yeah, fighters aren't going to be great for making money in game, where they're going to be cheap to buy compared to a lot of these ships that are good. So you like it's easier to earn down than up is basically what their opinion is, which I'm in two minds about because one part of me thinks, yeah, that's completely awesome. Like I'd love to have some real good money maker ships, so it's easy for me to earn other ships. Like uh, for me, it'd be ideal if I had. Like a Star Runner, a Mole, and a Hull C. That's like perfection. That's, yeah, that's just perfection right there. That's my a perfect starting fleet. Like I've got a little economy base and I can use those three ships to earn like whatever I want in game. But the other part of me thinks, no, 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 no. You should have nothing but a starter ship. And you should have to work your way up from bugger all. And I'm thinking at some point I'm going to get myself a second account. And I'm going to have the main account, which the one I'm playing on right now, where I've got some stuff on. And I'm going to have a second account where I've got bugger all. So I can have see it from both sides and see which one I end up preferring. I think that's going to be a good idea. I was planning to pause recording here, but I had a wee bit to want to talk about. So I continued talking about it. And I think that's what I'm going to plan to do. And then eventually, I think the plan is to transcend for like that concept once the other one's starting to catch up i'll transcend and turn one into like my pirate account one into my main account so yeah that's the plan did i ramble enough to fill up that void i wouldn't be surprised if i did 15 seconds i did i was planning to pause but i rambled enough and um, i should actually probably save that stuff for when we're traveling so i'm actually going to pause recording because i've got nothing to talk about as we're traveling now so i'm going to start the recording again as I get there. I'll see you all in a second. All right. We are back. I have traveled. We got a buccaneer here. Let's see if we can get a missile on this guy. Oh. This is the C4 difficulty one, so keep that in mind. Whoa, the frames are taking a big nosedive. Yeah, we got blittered. I was expecting this thing to last a wee bit longer than that, but yeah, C4 difficulty is... Yeah, there is a lot of DACA coming in. If you don't take those ships down fast, yeah, sometimes uh, those missiles, they just... Yep. You know what? I'm bored of the Super Hornet. Let's take out a Connie. Yes! A Connie. What? Yeah, I just fell on my face. I think I tripped over the landing gear or something. Now, I don't, I've not done this in a patch, I think it is. It's been roughly a patch since I've done this. But I used to use, actually, the colony for bounty missions quite a bit. Because, uh, with the guns, you could quite often, like, the four, you could normally DP, get that much DPS. By the time the AI got close enough to you to engage, you could have, like, nuked them all. Like, send a couple of missiles after one ship. And then use the size fours just to blow everything else out of the air before they had a chance to fire. So yeah, there is a lot of firepower. It's not a great fighter, but it's the alpha damage, basically. I was using alpha damage to just, like, blow difficulty missions out the water. And fours, I was doing normally fours and threes and having no problem whatsoever. So I thought, yeah, it's been a patch. I think it's been a patch since I've done it. Let's see if we can do it again. In the Connie, which is another ship I really like, but like, don't listen to me. The alpha damage may be nice in this thing that I'm talking about compared to a fighter. 
This thing is not a fighter, though. It is... I think it's classed as a medium ship. But for a medium ship, it's one of the largest... Or is it considered... Is, I can never remember if it's one of the largest medium ships or it's one of the smallest large ships. It's one or the other. And it's... Yeah. It is really not in a good place right now, the Connies. So where's our... Do we need to reset up our... Yeah, I think we need to reset up our route. Is it route? There we go. Yeah, the layout for the Connies isn't great. The... There's several parts of the ship on the Connie that are way too fragile. There's... Just several stuff with the Connie that are just not really in a good place. Which is a shame because the ship does look beautiful. I'd love it to get a rework. And well as I say the ship does look beautiful, you can tell it looks a wee bit dated compared to a lot of their uh, newer, newer ships. I'd love for it just to get like a small rework where they don't have to completely rebuild the thing from the ground up but they do need to definitely buff the parts of the ships like the engines they die like a second anyone sneezes on them uh, the layout interior probably needs a large rework and the exterior probably I'd give a minor rework just just breathe a wee bit fresh air into the con is really what I feel needs done Now, where are these targets? I don't see a map objective at all. Let's go into our context manager, make sure I've got the C4 accepted. We are tracking it. Oh. Never mind, we found them, we found them. They're all on the other side of this asteroid. There we go. There we go. See what I mean about the alpha strike there on that. I'm a wee bit behind. I normally would start doing it from further away and get a couple of missiles on a couple of them as well. But there we go. That's what I mean about the alpha strike on this thing. I'm probably going to take... I don't know, remember I was talking about the gimbal vs ungimbal. This ship definitely go gimbal. Because I'm not a fighter, it's going to be hard to keep them just in the front arc, never mind. Right, right, next one, next one. Oh, missiles incoming. Missiles incoming. Is this the guy I needed to take down? I can't remember. I've ordered 500. They all gave me 500 UEC and stuff. Who's that? Did I finish the mission there? I don't remember seeing it. Yeah, it's gone, so it must be done. Right, track this one now. Right, let's go. Pressing the wrong damn button. I was like, why am I not moving? Oh, and I forgot I need to set the skyline. And this Connie versus the Star Runner, because I did talk about the Star Runner a lot earlier and how I really want the Star Runner. The Connie, the Star Runner's 
big weakness is it doesn't have a lot of guns. Um, we don't know weaknesses. Like maybe it's like the Connie and it's really like easy to kill and destroy, but it doesn't have any sticking out hull parts because it's normally ships that have these sticking out parts that, like the Connie has those engines, the like nasals, like Star Trek type thing going on. It's normally little bits like that that have really strong weak points that just die the second anyone sneezes at them. The Star Runner doesn't seem to have anything like that. So, fingers crossed, because uh, one of the other ships that really, really was similar was uh, the Reliant series. The Corys and all that, they did get a massive buff not too long ago, which led me to believe I was hoping they were going to do the Corys, because they said it was going to be one of the focuses for this year, was redoing ships like the Reliance, just so they had that wee bit more. But the Reliance got done, but the Corys are still... I've not actually taken a lot. I know the Reliance got buffed, and I know I tried them out and they felt better, but I've not actually looked to see. Hi, Grim Hex. Neutralize the bounty. Normally you can see them by now. Eshin Vor. Where's this? I don't want to type. I want to change. Inside Grim Hex. Whoa. Attacked by another player, it looks like. Means I'm gonna be dead because there's another player fighting a Connie. Yep, I'm gonna be dead really fast. Oh. Whoa, I didn't even realize we bumped into an asteroid. Oh! Wait, did he just. Oh, we're, we're bumping into more asteroids. Are my guns firing on their own? It looks like they are from here. Yeah, a lot of, I've never really seen that players attack each other a lot, but they seem to be doing it a lot at the moment. It's Grim Hex. To be honest, I don't go to Grim Hex a lot. That's probably why. That is Grim Hex there. So, yeah. Maybe I'm just not used to going to Grim Hex. Grim Hex, you probably need to be watching your back. Especially being something like a Connie. People are probably like, No, oh, it's a Connie! Let's blow it up! It's so easy to destroy! Okay, as a Connie is, you think about it, a Connie should be like a freelancer on steroids. The Connie, the Constellation Andromeda should be just like a huge, better freelancer, but the freelancer is a lot more tanking, so it's like, huh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, yes, uh, I'm going to call it a part here because you've seen me get myself killed enough. I shall see you all next time. I hope you've all enjoyed this. Bye, say bye. Thank you.